All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It is time now for the finals of the Innkeepers Invitational here at BlizzCon 2013. Artosis versus Kriparian. BlizzCon, are you ready? Well, some would have predicted this as the final, certainly. I think a lot of people said, yeah, absolutely. Crip can definitely make it to the finals. He's an absolutely fantastic player. Some may not have suspected Artosis to actually make it here, but then they horribly underestimate the desire of Artosis to win something on stage. That's right, and he finds himself in a finals. Will he come he up does. once again as the bridesmaid or the bride? We will find out. There it is. That's the bracket. That's who they made their way through to get this far. Artosis destroyed Noxious and did a good job of taking out Trump as well, dropping a single game. And of course, we had a fairly similar result from Crip, who took out Hafu 3 0 and then 3 1. Well, actually, almost 3 1. It was, in fact, a 3 0 for, against Wreckful as well. Almost, almost Wreckful actually had a chance of taking a match off him, but that did not happen. So Crip continues to go through undefeated. He's shown two games out of three, and he's thrown two decks out of three, in fact. Yeah. And we'll see what he decides to bring out next. Is he going to open up with something he's already shown? Will he decide to throw out his new one to try and surprise his opponent and gain momentum? We'll find out shortly. And let's remind everyone the format of this tournament. Of course, we are playing best of fives the entire way through. Each player has three decks, and they all have to pick different classes. Uh, the players will blind pick their first deck and then face off. The person who wins, they have to keep using that deck until they lose. The person who loses, they have to swap out with a different deck from their arsenal. When one player has three decks eliminated, they are out of the tournament. Yes, they are. And it is the grand finals. That's the difference between taking that trophy home and going home as second place, which results in getting nothing, I believe. So, yeah, that's, that's not too good. I'm really interested to see what's going to come out from both players first, because, of course, that is a blind pick, and then it's loser enough. picks after that. So it becomes a little bit more predictable, but we have no idea which of those three decks are going to be brought out. But, of course, I would like to remind you, if you are currently watching the tournament, you'd like more people to watch the tournament, our current viewer figures are actually insanely high right now. People really want to watch this inaugural Hearthstone tournament. Please do get on Twitter and let people know. Hashtag BlizzCon, hashtag in. If you can sneak in into some kind of sentence that horribly confuses all your followers, then you should do that. Yes, wise words there from Total Biscuit. Uh, but we're getting everything ready now for our two players, Artosis versus Kriparian. As we mentioned before, they both have a deck that we haven't seen this entire yes. tournament. Uh, for Kriparian, that is, of course, his mage deck mm -hmm. uh, entitled Turn 8. Yes, and then, of course, we have Artosis's Priest deck. That's the one I'm most interested yes. in seeing. Uh, mage decks are mage decks. Unless you're going to go for something a little bit crazy, like, say, Wreckful's mage deck, you pretty much know what to expect, and there's some variances on that. Artosis's Priest deck is very interesting. And then, of course, we have his Paladin and his Warrior. We've seen both. We've seen his Paladin a lot, and it's ridiculously good. I would say the best Pally deck in the tournament right now. And then, of course, we have his Warrior deck, which just decimated Trump with an excellent combo. That's absolutely right. And we can take a look at Kriparian's decks as well. He has a Mage, a Priest, and a Paladin. Of course, for all of you who are watching, as soon as one of those decks goes down, a big red X will appear through it, and that'll signify that he can no longer use that deck. Once every deck has a red X through it, he is eliminated from the tournament. And uh, unfortunately, that will be that. We are at the Dude, finals. I'm enjoying seeing uh, Crip's decks being crossed off there, because it's not something we've got to see so far in That's this right. tournament. And it may be something we never see. See. So I guess we will find out. Crip is dominating, but he is about to come up against his toughest opponent so far, who has also dominated his way through the tournament, through some very tough opponents indeed. No kidding, and I am incredibly excited as well to see what both these players pick as their first deck. Are we going to see something we haven't seen yet? I don't know. What I do know is that our finals are ready. BlizzCon, are you ready? Then let's hand it over to Zoe. Thank you very much, guys, and I am now so happy to finally got our two best players up here on stage. And I don't know, I mean, this is the first ever Hearthstone tournament on such a big stage. How, 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 how is it going so far for you guys? Are you enjoying this? All right, that's what I thought. 
and there's going to be a lot more enjoyment in those finals. I'm expecting great games. No pressure, guys, but I, I really, really, really do. And for that, let's get those guys up here on stage first. Only losing a one a single match against Trump. Apart from that, undefeated. Please welcome to the stage, Artosis. <laughs> And his opponents, apparently a man of a few words, but many cards. Please welcome on stage, Crip. So, Artosis, I mean, you, you've heard the casters kind of making fun of you and, and about you wanting to win. And also, whilst we were backstage, they kept on... I'm, I mean, I'm just going to be... I mean, I'm far away, so I can totally do that. They're not going to listen to me. They said that you're going to start to be unbearable if you're going to win that. Can we, can we expect that from you? Is that going to happen? Absolutely. The other casters will never hear the end of it. Good, good. That's what I'm going to expect. So, Crip, I'm just going to assume you're not going to be as uh, bragging as he is going to be about that. But uh, how would you celebrate your first big victory here? I uh, didn't bring any orange juice, but I'll probably get... <laughs> probably get some food after and go home and start up the stream or something. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Totally going to tune in to that one. Now let's talk a little bit about the upcoming match. I mean, we both only saw two of your decks being played so far. Uh, we're missing out on your mage, which was called Round 8. Do you think that's giving away something, maybe? Or is that misleading? Um, well, if it's misleading, I wouldn't really say anything, right? That is very true, but one can hope, one can hope. So you, show, uh, you showed us like, an amazing palette and we really enjoyed playing that, uh, like seeing that warrior being played. Did, are there any surprises in your last deck or is it just, just going to be the same dominance again? Well, I, I hope it's going to be the same dominance again, but I hope I don't have to use that deck at least. All right, we will see. We kind of hope that you have to. But uh, we're going to see about that. So, gentlemen, please shake hands and we can get the finals on the way. First ever here at the BlizzCon 2013. I'm, I'm so pleased to be part of it. So should everyone out here. And now, please, big round of applause for our casters, Kevin Noki and Total Biscuit. Thank you very much, Zoya. Packed house here to watch a card game that isn't even real. <laughs> That's right, a collectible card game that only exists virtually and isn't Indeed. even out in open beta yet, but we appreciate everyone who has been tuning in. It has been a pleasure to cast this tournament for you. Yeah, it has been absolutely fantastic, and hopefully we will only see Hearthstone get better from a competitive standpoint, being able to bring you spectator tools, being able to actually show you more of what's going on and analyze it better. But thank you for bearing with us, considering this is a game that isn't even out yet, and obviously things like spectator mode will hopefully be coming later down the line but looks like you guys have enjoyed it regardless and we're really happy to see that and this is going to be a clash of the titans here that's right and our titans are ready as we speak so let's move into the finals here artosis versus kriparian Here we go, there's the lineup. Artosis, he stares into your soul. He desires victory. Crip, friendliest man in the world. A gentle giant on the stage. Smirks into your soul, He apparently. does, he does. He smirks into your soul. It's a slightly friendly smirk, but it's also, <laughs> I'm going to horribly destroy you at this card game kind of smirk. But here we go, Pally on Pally. It's the, arguably the strongest deck from both players going up against each other in a mirror match. That's right, and uh, we saw these decks uh, as quite successful throughout this entire tournament. Artosis so far is 6-1, and one. Kriparian is 6-0, and oh. so both of these players have very impressive records, uh, but Artosis has dropped a game, Kriparian has not. Yeah, however, I do have to say that this the, both the Paladin decks have been extremely successful for both, right? We saw in the round of eight, it was pretty much exclusively the Paladin decks from both players that came out. They were the only decks to be shown. So I think they're both playing a little bit safe against each other, thinking, right, okay, I just want to play the deck that I was successful with initially. This is a great setup for Artosis as well. He can turn one coin knife juggler, turn two Argent Protector, uh, and even turn
Return 3 Sword of Justice Possibly, if you so yeah. desires, yeah. but you don't really want to keep that up there just in case something could destroy it. Um, in any case, though, I'm very optimistic about his beginning here. Crip has a little bit of work ahead of him. Yeah, Crip is going to start destroying the stage already. Uh, he's pretty much the rock star of Hearthstone. Uh, that's the way of it. He was actually demanding no brown M&Ms backstage. It was terrible. But we've got the coin into knife juggler play, which is a very popular opener because it generally has a follow-up. And in the Paladin deck, the combo is great with that Divine Shield because it keeps it alive and it gives you a knife as well. So, yeah, I didn't really expect anything else to happen. He may decide to hold on to the Divine Shield if he feels there's not that many threats out on the board. And he can just, say, go for an initiate instead and Hold on to that till later, but it's knife juggler or knife juggler potentially here. That's right. And uh, supposing I, I don't think he's going to put up the knife juggler right now, though. Cryptos, um, he can do it, but it's just going to get killed. Okay, I'm, I'm a little concerned about this, to be totally honest. He's just throwing it up there as bait. Arch and protector is going to come in. Of course, he doesn't know about the existence of the yeah. arch and protector, but it's still really unfortunate. Yeah, Artos is going to be happy with this because not only does he get a knife, it's unfortunate that he didn't actually end up hitting the paladin because ultimately that's wasted the damage. But there is the first blood yeah. with Artos, and it's, it's a great combo. And <laughs> out come the emotes already. You can see just how horribly offensive these players are. Jeez. All right. So this is already kind of a bad situation for Crip right yeah, now. Yeah, it's not great. There's very strong board advantage uh, for Mr. Artosis. He can clear that uh, that board out with the uh, with the Sword of Justice, and he yeah. doesn't even have to injure any of his Archer Protector or Knife Juggler combo. It's the best time to play the Sword of Justice as well when you already have board control, because Sword of Justice ultimately slows your deck down a little bit as you play it, and that's a good time to do it. All right. Hammer of Wrath comes out, so if he wants to, he can get rid of that Knife Juggler, but there is a Consecration on the field, which is probably the better option. It's not the best thing ever, because of course he would love to get more cards out of it than that, just like kill more minions, but two is okay. So he's fine with that. He takes that out and then uh, throws over the next turn. All right, now this is actually not ideal at this point. I would expect we'll probably see an initiate out of this, yep. because you don't really want to play a Defender of Argus on its own or the Spellbreaker. So there's that. He may decide to shield it. He may not. It's a 2-2. It's maybe not the best use of your Divine Shield, but it's not awful either, and it allows you to maintain yeah. board control with a 3-3 three, three and exactly. a 2-2 two, two that has Divine Shield. So that's not too shabby anyway. Yeah, and it looks like another Hammer of Wrath pops out, so there are certainly removal options available. True Silver Champion is going to quickly take out yeah. this uh, Argent Protector. They'll gain back two health, of course, for Crip, but he'll lose net one after taking three damage from the Protector. Yeah, that he will, and down he goes. So some damage already being done to Crip. Artos is still in a pretty good position. Elder Peacekeeper, not really what he wanted. He's no. not pulling the cards he wants here. You, he could go Defender of Argus, which is not the worst idea ever, but he maybe he would prefer to do something a little bit different because Defender of Vargas is not that good here, but it is better than nothing. Like, if you looked at the other options he had, okay, he only buffs one creature. That's not as great as it could be, but it's still pretty good because he's got a 3-3 Divine Shield Taunt and a 4-4 there. He's going to get spell broken though, yeah. so that's going to take that down to a 1-1. One, one. Then good that's play. when he's going to come in. Crip just, like, an absolute efficiency there. Destroys that no problem at all. And Crip's now in a good spot because he's sitting on two Divine Shields with a 4-3, right? That's absolutely ideal. And Artosis doesn't actually have an answer to that 4-3 at the moment. I mean, he could go Avenging Wrath, possibility there. Yeah. He could decide to uh, use an Aldor Peacekeeper to weaken it a little bit, knowing that there's the possibility that his opponent then shields that 4-3 and gets preferential trades out of it. Yeah, Argent Commander comes in here That's as a 5-4 as well, yeah. if he wants to use the last uh, the last pop on that uh, Sword of Justice. Anyway, he can take out the Spellbreaker, and yes. he can destroy the Recruit, and he sits around with a 5-4 on board uh, with pretty much no opposition. That's okay. Uh, I, I wonder what he will decide to do here. He does have those removal options, but maybe he doesn't want to burn them on something that's not a massive threat. He's going Imp Master. All right, so that's going to be... It's a 2-6. Yeah, it means more Imps, which is always good. And then he can Aldo Peacekeeper on that, which is going to take that down to the 1-3, which is good. So less threat, and I mean, it's a 3-3 three, three and a 2-6. And Crypt doesn't have anything on the board to kill it, but he is sitting on things like those Hammer of Wrath. Yeah, that's right. So we could drop one in right here. And he also has a Divine Favor that finally did hit, but the problem Ultimately is... Useless right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. Divine Favor, of course, is a three-mana card that allows you to draw up to your opponent's hand size. But the problem is, is that Artosis has been burning through his cards very quickly. And it looks like... Uh, all right. Uh, it's actually an Archer Commander that's coming in to take out that, uh, that. that Imp Master yeah. right away. Well, the, the risk is that, a, say, a second Sword of Justice comes out, and then he ends up getting more buffed Imps. So that's fine. Two Argent Commanders, a Spellbreaker and Avenging Wrath there. Argent 
commander on Argent commander action coming in here. Just totally fine. Then trades that out, gets his board advantage back, and continues to hammer home. This deck is just efficient, efficient, efficient all the time. Great trades. And while he's using a lot of cards, it does mean that it shuts down the Divine Favor draw capability of his opponent there. Although this is really cool. The Hammer of Wrath clears out the Argent course, Protector, yeah. throws out Scarlet Crusader on top of that. Of course, Abusive Sergeant doesn't do anything for him yeah, this turn, so we'll really reserve that. that so he can get the plus two attack buff next turn. Yep, all right, so that leaves him with, he could spell break there, possibility, maybe not ideal. He could think about Avenge, Avenging Wrath if he wants to play Rush down here, because he's gonna do a lot of damage with that and yes. hopefully take that out. And he but will also assuredly kill exactly. it, it actually gets splat, it with the first splat, two. Splat. Yeah, just murders him down to 10 health there. And that was the, absolutely the right call, I feel, from Artosis. It's a great time to use Avenging Wrath, but when there's just not that much on the board and you can guarantee kills and lots of damage. Takes his opponent down to seven right now. Crip is not sitting on taunt. This is a pretty ugly spot. He is able to get rid of that 3-3, three, three, though. All right, uh, Noble Sacrifice. Unfortunately, he's only going to stop a 1-1 yeah, right now. Yeah, that's not going to help too much. Right, and uh, would be able to stop that Argent uh, Commander that we see on the other side. Uh, he does have options, though. A lot of small creatures. And that's kind of the focus of his deck. His deck was designed not to play this, like, board control, hey, I'm trying to fight off your aggression. His deck was designed to be the aggressive one. He's got lots of small creatures, Argent Protectors, Abusive Sergeants, Argent Squires. He can even throw those recruits out there on the back of Sword of Justice and continue to just build up board presence. Uh, and then he replenishes his hand with Divine Favor, but unfortunately, he just can't do it right now. No, no, he really can't. And unfortunately, this deck relies on being able to get that control on the board and maintain it, and currently he hasn't been able to do that. Quality comes out, I mean, that's ultimately one of the most useless cards you could have against the deck like Crips, so that's not really going to help him too much. There's also two Divine Shields, even if there was a Consecrate, it wouldn't actually do anything anyway. So there's potential rush here. I mean, Argent Commander can hit again, take him down to three, puts him in an even more risky position. But even then, you know, he hasn't quite got it yet. All right. Well, yeah, like you said before, equality is useless. Um, I mean, the Argent Commander rushing him down to three is not bad just because he has so many weapons available. He could True Silver Champion right on top of that next turn and do all right. Yeah. Um, there is the possibility, too, that he throws that out there. Um, and yeah, he's, it looks like he's just going to get yeah. his opponent straight down to two right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that maybe is that, that is the best option for him because, you know, obviously, as you can see, Crip is in a really, really bad way now. Noble Sacrifice may keep him alive, but... It, Oh, Ragnaros, <laughs> that sounds great, but ultimately against what's on the board, it actually isn't. That's not a good time. No, and he's not been able to use his Divine Favor the entire time. That does, just doesn't work against Artosis' Paladin deck that's less reliant on a bunch of little initiates. It's more reliant on cards, so you never get the opportunity to play it. And let's have a look at what can really be done well, here. Yeah, the Abusive Sergeant is good here because he can cost efficiently take out the uh, the Argent Commander there. Um, all he has to do is use one of the Divine Shields on... Yeah, uh, but he'd rather kill the Imp Master yeah, because go. ultimately it's more stuff for, uh, on the board. And that gets that all the way down to that, then plays Noble Sacrifice, then Ragnaros. Now, let's see what that hits. It's either going to ping off the Shield or it's gonna end up hitting his opponent, and out comes the fireball, it hits his opponent down to 19. All right, now that is a board and a half right there. Defender of Argus comes out. This is problematic for Artosis. Yeah. Uh, because he cannot, he pretty much knows that's a noble sacrifice. He's got to know it's a noble sacrifice. So he can't, he doesn't have what he needs to quite kill his opponent off. And with a Ragnaros on the field, yes, this could be the start of Crip's comeback in a really big way. That's right. He's maintained board control. And the most important part, too, is that uh, uh, not only does he maintain board control, but he's got a very large minion out there that Artosis doesn't have the ability to deal with. Spellbreaker yes. turns it into a big old 8 8 creature Which that can is start not that attacking. Yeah. Right. The quality's not going to help because no. noble sacrifice is out. Out. So ultimately, that's very, very difficult to deal with. All right. Well, I mean, uh, best possibilities now are almost just uh, Spellbreaker, maybe another minion, and throw up Defender of Argus and, and pray and hope that uh, uh, the taunt is going to be enough to hold uh, Crit back next turn. Yeah, I mean, even even putting out Spellbreaker kind of is kind of bad, but I mean, yeah. what, what choice does he have? I mean, he could go Spellbreaker on Ragnaros and then Defender of Argus just to buff them up a little bit, stay alive. He's going to go for the minion instead. He can still do that. Obviously, he doesn't want to play equality right now. That's not going to be what he wants to do. Out comes the defender of Argus. He's going to hold on to the Spellbreaker. And yeah. he's going to go right for him. He, he knew. I mean, he, he, knew, he knew what of it was going to be. It was going to be a Noble Sacrifice. That also pings the shield off it. But there's a... Uh, I mean, that, that's pretty much dead next turn, isn't it? So... 
Yeah, well, I'm trying to see how cost efficiently. Uh, oh wow, actually, uh, Crypt can get through those taunt minions very cost efficiently. You can use the uh, Argent Protector right on the recruit there, then the abusive Sergeant, uh, the Argent Squire, and the recruit yeah, to and take he pulls out. Yeah, he the, the champion out as well. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the health to <laughs> feasibly use it. It's I true. mean, he can use it to kill the two-two, and that he'll still stay alive as he does that. But I mean, he, it's still a little bit rough for him, but he's definitely got a shot in this game going forward. The Archer Protector is going to be very useful for him. Divine Favor, if he burns his entire hand, he can get a couple of cards out of it maybe, which is better than nothing. All right, well, he's considering his options right now. Uh, Argent Protector is probably going to come in at some point just to be able to maintain one more minion against all of the, uh, uh, everything that Artosis has yep, on the board. Yep. Ragnaros, of course, will deal eight damage to something. Uh, and it's actually preferable right now for that Ragnaros to, to deal damage to minions, to be totally honest, yes. and not actually go after our Paladin friend here. Yeah, because if he's able to get that kind of level of control on the board, he can just kill his opponent anyway. He doesn't need to fireball. All right, so Argent Protector is going to come out. That's going to allow an efficient trade here against that 2-2 and not have it die, right? Which is nice, so he could get rid of that. He's probably gonna have to throw some stuff out to kill that because he can't just leave it alive. He knows that, so he's gonna end up losing three minions to make that happen. And he could honestly true silver champion and just go straight after uh, the Paladin as well, just to retain a little bit more health. Ah, the Divine Favor is really yeah, nice yeah, here. Burn, burn it all away. If he wants to go after the Paladin, he's obviously going to have to clear that taunt out of the way first. There is a Lepidum coming out as well, which is nice. Then he does that and <laughs> playing with fire he is. But of course, unless an Avenging Wrath comes out, Let's see what happens. Yeah, Spellbreaker and Crip, a quality. Crip might have it. Consecration! Oh, no! Are you kidding me? <laughs> and Artosis takes game number one in style. What a top deck. Oh, oh, oh. That's got to hurt so bad. Ragnaros oh. is like, what happened? <laughs> Artosis breathing a sigh of relief right there as he does take game number one. And Artosis is just two games away from winning a BlizzCon tournament. Oh, that was a fantastic game. That was one of the best ones we've had a chance to see so far. I hope the rest of them are like that. But again, it shows just how absurd that Paladin deck is. But it almost lost. It really did. If that hadn't been that kind of top deck that had been able to kill his opponent immediately, that would have turned around completely. And Crypt could have very easily had that. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So the question is now, what deck is Crypt going to bring out? He just suffered his first loss of yep. the entire tournament. Both of these players are now 7-1. and one. He's only got two more, uh, or I'm sorry, 6-1 uh, to 7-1 right now. He's only got two more decks available to him. Uh, and we already saw one of those before, but is he going to bring out that turn 8 mage? I'm, I'm thinking maybe the mage, honestly. Yeah. I'm thinking... If he can bring that mage out, he can kill Artosis before Artosis can... Because Artosis' deck is quite slow. Yes. Yeah? you got to bear that in mind. It, it doesn't... It's not a turn 5 or turn 6 kill or anything like that. That uh, turn 8 mage deck, which we assume is exactly that, which is designed for a reasonable amount of direct nuking. It's not like Wreckful's deck. It's not all in on right. trying to kill your opponent. But it does have a lot of firepower at its disposal. But here's the most annoying thing about that deck from Artosis. To lay on hands in it. Yeah. Even if the direct nukes come out, then he could burn through all of his nukes before Artosis actually dies. All right, guys. Well, it's time to move into game number two right now between Artosis and Kriparian. Are you ready? <laughs> Looks like our crowd is ready, so let's jump into it, guys. Let's see if Artosis can keep on winning or if Krip is going to make his way back. It's the priest deck that we've seen already from Crip, or the mage that we have yet to see come out in this tournament. I wouldn't be surprised if he breaks the mage out right now. I really wouldn't. It's, yeah. It seems like a reasonable idea. The priest could do okay, I think. It, it could do pretty well. But it, I think it's a toss-up between the two at this point, and it is going to be the Priest. All right, he's going to keep the Mage till last. All right, now we saw this was a very powerful deck last time, and it was able to hold back um, all three decks that Wreckful brought out as well, even yeah. though Wreckful did have the opportunity to win one of those he games, did, yes. unfortunately. Yes. Um, so taking a look at things, Artosis now, uh, Lay on Hands is not great. He'll definitely want to get rid of that. Has a Spellbreaker and a Bloodsail Raider. Crip already going through his selections. He's only going to keep that Power Word Shield. He yeah. gets rid of the Temple Enforcer, the Shadow Word Death, and the Defender of Argus. Yeah. 
Tossing the Spellbreaker might not be the worst idea. Vi is going to toss everything. I thought maybe you keep on hold of the Raider, but ultimately you, the Raider is actually something you want mid-game when you have a weapon out, not early game. It's like, oh, it's two mana. Surely you want it early game. Not necessarily. Right. That, that's a little bit better. Oh, Tyrion Forgering <laughs> is just going to sit there saying hi. But unfortunately, he's just pulled Tyrion Forgering against a Priest deck, which is not ideal because Mind Control is too much of a threat. So. As much as I think we, you know, we'd love to see it, we're probably not even going to see Tyrion played. It's too much of a risk against a priest. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So, all right, uh, we're going to start things off now. No obvious plays uh, for Nothing. either of our players yeah. yet. So, priest passes the turn, coming yeah. right back to our paladin, and he is probably just going to pop a recruit. Yeah, I would think so. I don't really see an Arch of Protection coming out here. And the ooze could have been coined into, but if that happened, you've got to bear in mind that he knows his opponent's got four weapons. So, he doesn't really want to waste the ooze in that respect. So he's thinking about what he wants to do here and thinking, oh, do I really want to do the ooze? He's actually just going to skip the turn entirely and then destroy the well. Yeah, I mean, uh, an ooze is, is is so valuable against uh, really a Paladin deck. It really and it's is. going you to come into it. effect right here. That one five sword of justice yes. just went out, and this is going to get oozed right away, much to the chagrin of Artosis. Artosis is not going to be happy about that. I mean, that is the ultimate destruction oh. of a weapon right there, before it even got to be used. Right. So he's pretty happy about that, and then buffs it up to a 3-4. So Crypt's patience definitely paid off for him there. All right. Well, Imp Master is probably a decent play here. Uh, He's got so. two of them sitting around. Elder Peacekeeper against just a 3-4 uh, uh, ooze at this point. Not going to be all that great. Yeah, I'd probably think about the Imp Master I mean, He could point. do it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the uh, other thing, yeah. I mean, I guess that works too. Uh, usually you might hold on to the Aldor because you want to use it against something a little bit more powerful. But ultimately, I don't think you want that 3-4 ooze rampaging everywhere. That's just not going to work out well for you. Yeah. There's the 4-8 Drake coming out. Very, very powerful play there by Crip. I almost the highest you can get that drink. Consecration is not going to help you right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I questioned that play last time from Artosis. It's not bad, but I mean, having the M Master out there would have absorbed one shot from the ooze as well. It would have been able to, to, to have it uh, still pump out a couple of imps. He had another one behind that too, if ever. He drew into another Sword of Justice, but the M Master isn't as valuable uh, without the Sword of Justice out there. So honestly, it would have been just nice for it to absorb a few hit points and make sure you can establish his board through other means. Yeah, okay. Well, Imp Master right now is probably one of his best choices. He can't just sit around taking damage, certainly. Right. But the other choices that he has in his hand just don't really work. So we might we'll probably see Imp Master Initiate come out and just start to get more minions on the board, give him the possibility to start buffing things up and maybe get into a good spot there. There is the 3-3, um, the so at least that, that gets rid of that. But... It's it's not it's not a great spot for Artosis initially in this game. Uh, that that Drake is going to sit there trading forever, and there's not really much you can do about it yet. And uh, just going through Artosis's deck list here real quick, there are two Spellbreakers which he could potentially draw into right now to be able to help against that Drake. Uh, he just hasn't found any of them yet. All right, Sun Fury Protect comes out. He does have Defender of Argus as well, which might be a decent idea. However, that's going to eliminate that immediately. And you might think, oh, why did he use it on the 3-3 three, three instead of the 1-4? Because it bypasses the Divine Shield. So it is a better play. He absolutely made the right call there. And now he's just going to smash everything Ooh. and maintain fantastic board control. Man, we are seeing the power of this deck again. The deck was entitled Control the Drakes, and that's exactly what's happening. Get an early Twilight Drake out there with a ton of hit points, keep healing it up and making sure that it never goes away, especially against this Paladin deck, which doesn't have, honestly, a lot of responses against it. Maybe we could see some sort of a big equality consecration um, swap here in a bit, but otherwise, ugh. Not without equality, he's not. I mean, yeah. right now, he can roll the dice on Avenging Wrath and potentially get two creatures, but ultimately, that's pretty probably not going to happen statistically. So it's a bit of a risk to pull that off. You might kill at least one, which would certainly help. And weakening that Drake will be helpful too. But ultimately, it's now at a point where there's nothing he can really play that's going to stop that damage coming in next turn. All right. Well, man, I mean, yeah, options are really limited for him. He's going to take at a minimum, which there's 10 on the board. Uh, and I think there were a couple of other, other buffs sitting there. I don't yeah. exactly remember He's what. He's going to roll the dice. All right, so let's see what he gets. 
Oh, oh that's oh, that is the. Uh, it's not the worst because at least he gets the one one for the two one, but two would have been nice. Yes. It was definitely not as good as he was hoping for. Man, this is such oh, this a is great silly deck now. here. Look oh at this. man. Yeah, Crip comes out with the Temple Enforcer. He gives us Twilight Drake three more health. That's actually going to put it up to a total of ten. He can just heal that back up next time again. Yeah. Uh, and it's almost indestructible. True Silver Champion actually does nothing right now because it only takes down half the health of the Twilight Drake, and that can get healed right back up next uh, time. I think we might see Tyrion Forge during, like next turn because I just don't see any other possibility. You've got to take the risk yeah. that your because your opponent is that here's the here's the thing that at least right. helps him out, right? Because he ended up going first, he's one mana ahead of his opponent. So if he turn eight Tyrions, the mind control, even if it is in the hand of Crypt, isn't going to be available. He knows that. Avenging Wrath is the best option for him right now to soften things up. And he gets one creature out of it. That's not bad. Okay. And as it turns out, there is no mind control in his hand. And there isn't going to be next turn either. He may Drake here just a card draw because I suspect he knows, hey, there's a possibility of something nasty coming out. I need to try and get a hold of that. But I Drake think it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's going to have to be Tyrion next turn, surely. And again, no mind control. This is good news for Artosis potentially here. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, he doesn't know that yet. Uh, he's going to have to take the risk one he's way or another. I agree There's with you. Yeah. Else. There's nothing else. There really isn't. He can't let that stuff stay on the board. He's got to well, protect himself. It's I'm, high damage. He's only going to take 11 just right now. Actually, if he does Tyrion next time, too, there is a Shadow Word Death available, which is going oh. to give him, of course, the uh, the 5 3 weapon. But the problem is, there's enough damage on board that yeah. it doesn't matter. So if we see Tyrion, game is over and Crip wins. Yeah. Uh, I think game might be over and Crit wins anyway at this point. He's, he's got to risk the Tyrion. Out it comes. There it is. Oh, no. And this is going to be devastating for Artosis when he sees what's about to happen. Yeah, now. that Shadow Word Death sitting there. It gets Shadow Word Death. And that is. Oh, they he say, drew the mind control, actually. <laughs> 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 All right, never mind. And there it is. One, one now. That yeah. was. Yeah, that, crushing defeat there. That Priest deck has now gone 4-0 and oh in the yeah. semifinals and finals, and it has been quite, quite efficient for Crip. Uh, Artosis, of course, was just dealt a loss. It is the second yeah. loss overall of the tournament, but we have a nice even match. We're 1-1. One one. I wonder if we see Priest on Priest with that very strange deck. Now, obviously, we didn't want to give away too much about the deck while the guys didn't have right. their soundproof headphones on, but of course, now we can talk a little bit about it. That deck from Artosis is very strange. It is sitting on a bunch of cards which are not commonly used all the time. Things like Prophet Velen, the legendary yep. for the priest, which actually doubles the effect of healing and damage. Two circles of healing. Again, very strange card because it costs nothing, but it, it does four healing to everything. But the sting in the tail, two Alcani soul priests, which are very strange cards because they change any healing that you do into damage. That's right. So they, I mean, you can you can wipe the board very effectively with circles of healing in that kind of scenario. With Prophet Velen, you can make things even nastier. All right, guys. Well, our competitors are ready to go, so let's jump into game number three right now between Artosis and Kriparian here at the finals of the Innkeepers Invitational. Warrior or Priest is the question. The Warrior deck is very, very powerful. We know that for a fact. It's a, it's a big, big rushdown. Crip could be potentially vulnerable to that. However, as a Priest, he's also sitting on a lot of cards which let him stop that critical momentum from coming in. The ability to Shadow Word Pain or Shadow Word Death. Priest uh -huh. on Priest. Artosis brings out the secret Priest deck. He said he didn't want to use it, and now he is going to. That's right. So just really quickly running through this deck. Circle Healings, Holy Smite, Power Word Shield, Light Wardens, Northshire Clerics. We've already got a lot of card draw. We've already got a lot of uh, just good Heal value already. In there as well, you right. Know? Light Wardens are not something we've really seen all that much. They gain two attack every time they get healed, which is incredibly powerful. That's right, and a good amount of removal in those Shadow Words, two pain, one death, Injured Blade Masters, of course, the Alshani Priests, the uh, Soul Priests that you talked about before, yep. and Prophet Valen and Ragnaros as well in this deck, so oh, yeah. two major legendaries. 
Yeah, and that's pretty good against the Priest deck of Crip, who is only, I believe, sitting on one Shadow of Death, not two. But Mind Control is still a very big risk there. Right. All right, well, not the best hands for either to start with. Crip is, of course, going to open up being able to not do anything. So he's going to skip straight through that, and he doesn't pull the best thing either. Prophet Velen already in the hand right there. Very, very nice. But ultimately, there's nothing that Artosis really wants to do here either. Yeah, both these players are just going to be accumulating cards for a while. There's yeah. not a lot of early uh, damage that can off. be done. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's the thank you. The light shall burn you. It, it very well might. The abomination is another very strange card yes. that's in that. But there are reasons for it. Circle of healing comes out, and he immediately uses it to heal all the way up to seven. So on turn two, he's still got a four-seven creature on the field. That's right. And a lot of people would say, "Wow, why would you want to extend that many cards into one creature at the very beginning?" Think about priest removal, though. Priest removal is in the form of shadow word pain, shadow word death. It deals with three damage or less, or five, five damage, damage or more. more. Right. 4-7 is the sweet spot. Not only that, but you can heal that Blade Master right back up again, so it trades incredibly efficiently. And actually, Crip has nothing in his hand right. which can even come close to handling this at this point. Yeah, because if he just starts throwing out Shadowed Sun Clarence, they're just going to oh, die. Exactly. <laughs> they're just going to die, get healed yeah. back up. Just I, This is not a good spot for Kriparian right now. He needs to draw into a little bit better cards. It's really unfortunate that he had both of his Shattered Sun Clerics at the very beginning because he certainly wants to uh, use those later on to be able to buff up and protect his Drakes. Yeah, I love that combo, though. The Just that, that turn two. It, it's fortunate, of course, that he ended up going second and was able to coin into it. But the turn two injured Blade Master into Circle of Healing to get it right back up to a 4-7 is absurd value. Yes of course you use an extra card to do it but if it gains you early board advantage and advantageous trades it's absolutely what you want to do he might not play anything in fact i think that's probably the best idea he's just going to have to accept that a circle of healing again comes out and ultimately of course there's no follow-up here he, he could heal crit but i don't think that's right. going to happen somehow and uh, we're getting... Man, oh, this still is, nothing this can be is played. Rough. This is rough for Crip. He knows he can't just keep sitting there. So he's going to have to play out something which is going to at least be a bit of a bullet magnet for him. Out comes a Holy Nova. But the thing is, there's a Shadow of Pain. That's going to die immediately. He doesn't even have to waste the damage there. To be honest, though, he may he may even attack into he it just it because anyway. he can heal it yeah. right back up, exactly. and then he can reserve the removal for later. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some players prefer to do that. Some players prefer to use cards in those kind of situations. It looks like Artosis prefers to use his minion and wants to hang on to the cards for later to get rid of, like, utility minions that are maybe behind taunt walls or something right. along those lines. Out comes the injured Blade Master there. That's going to be a 4-5, not quite the match of his opponent there. And now we go on to turn four five here for for artosis and we could see holy smite and then just smack that would I, work yeah with the north shard cleric and then yeah, heal and back then he gets up that, <laughs> yeah he gets that as well so wonder yeah he, yeah he's got to go for that i thought so so we're gonna see the north shard cleric come out he's gonna use his circle or healing power probably just his healing power here. i would imagine there yeah. you go so the north shard cleric every time something gets healed on your side of the board that is a card drawn and a power word shield it is the biggest the scariest of uh, injured blade masters you will ever see I, I don't think you really call an injured blade master anymore it's been, yeah it's a fully rehabilitated blade master yeah it's actually like uh it's a cyborg uh, blade master at this point it's we, been buffed so much we, we, we can have rebuilt him. him we have the technology <laughs> All right, so holy, uh, the Holy Fire doesn't actually do enough damage to get no. rid of that, so that's unfortunate. As your Drake is a possibility, but then it immediately dies. Yeah. Temple and Force, you never really want to play on your own. At least you can get rid of the North Shine Clay, so that's gone. Right. I think that was best, because if you yes. throw the Azura Drake out there, all that would have happened was it would have died, it then the Inter Blade Master would have healed. Card draw. Yeah, yeah. You're just giving your opponent a card. You can't do that. No, 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 no. Absolutely do not do that. Holy Fire actually comes out for him as well. This is the combo with that and Prophet Velen is obscene. Oh, my. It's, oh, yes. it's just awful, and it's Prof not what you want to get hit by. Prophet Villain, of course, is a 7-7 seven, seven for 7 legendary that states that uh, any healing, any damage you would do is doubled. So all of a sudden, that Holy Fire is doing 10 damage and healing you for 10. Man, Artosis is quite frankly destroying Grip right yeah, he now. Is. He's doing incredibly well. No mistakes have been made. Twilight Drake comes out. That's good. You know, that's at least something that doesn't die immediately. Yeah, and he can put that up with the Defender of Argus too to at least give him a little bit of protection he's, for a while. But the problem is, is he's just going to walk into things like Prophet Velen yeah. and uh, he's, 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 he's one mana away as well, so he couldn't do it this turn, which right. means that that's probably not going to live through next turn. Again, at least it's a bit of a bullet magnet. He probably doesn't want to leave it 
on the field there. Prophet Velen could come out. Ragnaros oh. pulled as well, just to make matter even worse. Wow. All right. So, I mean, he could just go straight after the Twilight Drake, drop uh, Prophet Velen or something like that, then heal back up for a ridiculous mm. amount. Other possibility see. is, you, he, I mean, I know it's kind of weird to say that he would do it because it's an AoE. He could Holy Nova and then just use the attack of one. Yeah. Uh, he could use the attack of the Blade Master yes. to kill that off yes. and not lose anything. So that might be the case here. We'll see if he goes for it, and that is exactly what he does. And you might think, well, that's why would you use AoE like that? But it's it's the best play. Uh, ultimately, that doesn't do a lot of damage anyway. It's way better in this situation. Right. Let's see what Crypt draws into here. It's a Shadow Word Death, Not which again, help him. That, gonna... four, that four damage is the, uh, is the sweet spot. Shadow Word Death, Shadow Word Pain can't affect either the Injured Blade Master or the Argent uh, Commander. Uh, and once again, he's kind of limited on options. He's only got one four mana yeah. creature, throws out a Temple Enforcer, and he can't actually heal anything with yeah. it. Well, uh, the thing is, at least that doesn't die immediately. Like, it trades preferentially with both of these guys, which is good. However, the Holy Fire is sitting there. He could even play the Abomination if he's so desires, so he may be able to break his way through it. He won't be able to kill it with the Holy Fire, it will only do five, but regardless, it it would still weaken the creature a bit. But you know, it's a good card to play right now. Yeah, it didn't buff anything, but it's got good stats for this situation. All right. Well, Ragnaros uh, mana is up. Prophet of Valian mana Ra is up. He's Ragnar's got so... not a bad call. I mean, yeah. because that's 50-50. It kills the Temple Enforcer. Exactly. It kills the Temple Enforcer, and he still does eight damage this turn, too, which is amazing. Um, it, regardless, you know, either he does 16 damage, or he does eight damage and kills the uh, the uh, uh, the minion as well. MC is, of course, a risk. You know, it could get mind-controlled. He's scared to play a big legendary against yeah. that. So I... Right, let's see. It's got to be Rag, surely. There it is. All right, Ragnaros is on the board, ladies and gentlemen. And let's see what it hits. Who's it going to hit? It is going to hit the Temple Enforcer. Right down it goes. He hasn't been touched yet. Crypt knows it's like this is... At least he can get rid of the Ragnaros, right? Because it, even if he didn't have MC, he still has Shadow Word Death. So he can get rid of the Ragnaros, but that still puts him in a horrible spot. And he knows that. Just that eight damage was enough to make that worthwhile in that particular position there. Oh, heals right. that, he just, yeah, heals himself and then, of course, kills that off. So that puts him back in the game a little bit, but there's no question Artos is still ahead. There's that Light Warden, as we said, when a character gets healed, you gain plus, you gain plus attack. It's great. It is so very, very good. And especially at this stage of the game, when it can't be easily eliminated. All, All right. right, there's the heal. He's keeping Prophet Velen back. He doesn't want to use that just yet. And that now buffs that Light Warden up to 3-4. And he can continue his assault. The Abomination wouldn't be the worst idea right now. Yeah, I, I like that as well. It's yeah. going to provide an additional two damage at the very worst. At the very best, of course, it's going to absorb some hits, trade with some creatures, oh. and it's going to deal more damage uh, to Crip. He, he, Crib is not drawing well here at all, I'm afraid. He's going to use his Azure Drake to pull out another one. He gets a Spellbreaker. That's not bad. But he's got a lot of options as to what he spell breaks here, really. Right. And uh, his Holy Nova, unfortunately, is not going to trade with anything. It does do three damage right now and heals uh, just for two. But, yeah, man, he's just running out of options and quick. Honestly, Artosis has a very, very good grip on this game. Yeah, yeah, he certainly does. Artosis has a Holy Fire still, doesn't he? So he's actually got lethal damage next yes, turn. Yes, he does. Yeah, he's going to have to do something to stop that from happening. So he, just, he likes to silence that. All right, so that's four now, five. Oh, mind control oh. coming out as well. Four, eight, nine. Uh, and he, I mean, he's dead. Uh, Holy Fire is there. So that is going to be game, I believe. Yeah, no, just, yeah don't do the mental, mental arithmetic. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, yeah, he very much does. There's the Holy Fire, and Artosis takes the GG right there. That's right, and he is now up two to one. Artosis is one game away from taking the Innkeeper's Invitational here at BlizzCon 2013. That deck is a monster. Yeah, uh, we is. looked at it and said, that's a very strange kind of setup, but it's got so many options as well. The stuff we are talking about with the Alchemy Soul Priest earlier and the possibility of those big board clears with Circle of Healing is still an option in that deck. It is. And that's the best thing because you're not relying on one thing. What we saw out of it was Injured Blade Master Circle of Healing. That was his basically best possible circumstance turn to play. But if he didn't get that, and he pulls Circle later on, he's still got other things he can do with it. And that's why that deck is so good, because regardless of when you pull the cards, you've still got different uses for them as you go through. That's absolutely right. And we're actually going to get to take a look at Crypt's last deck, which is, of course, that mage deck entitled Turn well, 8. I hope he saved his best to last, because he's going to need it against that deck. That Priest deck from Artosis is terrifying. And the Injured Blade Master did 
a huge amount of work, stays alive till the very end of the game. Came out on turn two, bear in mind, and didn't die at all. All right, guys, well, we are ready for our fourth game here of the finals. It is going to be Kriparian versus Artosis. Artosis is up two to one. Match points, ladies and gentlemen. Crip, previously undefeated, is now on the verge of being eliminated by Artosis. Artosis is using his incredibly powerful and highly unusual priest deck. Crip is forced to bring out the mage deck he's been hiding this entire time. And here we go. That's right, this is the first time this deck has been revealed in the tournament. We have seen all the decks from everyone else. So this is the last one that we have to talk about. And this is a very, very, very quick deck if it can get off the ground. Yes, yeah, it, it is designed for a, an awful lot of nuke and doing an awful lot of damage, but not just with spells, yeah? It's not like Wreckful's deck where it's like you gotta kill him with spells. This has got synergy and early protection. He's got mirror image, something that the other mage decks in this tournament didn't have. He has arcane missiles and Mana Worm, which is again a great combo, and he also gets to go second if he pulls a Mana Worm here. That's great for him. He didn't, but you know he can hold on to the coin for potential play there as well. Sitting on two Sorcerer's Apprentice, so he's going to get a lot of cheaper stuff. That Ragnaros isn't coming out anytime soon, I'm afraid. But there you go. And he also has two Pyroblasts, which is more than most of the Mage decks in this tournament had. Oh, brilliant! That's exactly what he wanted right oh, there. Man. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so this is the combo. Yeah, the coin is going to be a spell as well, which is going to buff that Mana Worm to 2-3. Then he can potentially yeah. throw up Mirror Image. No, he's actually going, oh, this is good, because what he's doing is, if there is a Shadow Word Pain, which there is, he would have just lost a 3-3 three, yes. three rather than a 1-3. Exactly. Really, really smart there, and not burning off that combo. It's a very tempting thing to do, of course, but yeah, he, he did the right thing there. He baited out the Shadow Word Pain, and he's totally fine with that. Out comes the 3-2 ooze, so that's fine for him, and Artosis has got nothing. I mean, he, he literally cannot do anything, so he's going to just burst a few melons down there, I think, and out comes a Pyroblast, again, not that helpful, but we could see Mirror Image come out here, certainly, for the sake of it. You don't necessarily have to, because there's nothing to really protect against at this stage. Yeah, well, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, he can just kind of slam in for some damage, to be yeah. honest, just get four damage out on the board and uh, not have to yeah. overextend anything, and that's exactly what he's yeah. going to do. I wonder if he wants to hold on to that coin for the Azure Drake next turn. That I, would be pretty good. Yes, I have to think that that's what's oh, happening. Whoa, Artosis is getting starved right here. There's so little he can actually do. He's just healing himself back up and just trying to buy time until he actually gets the cards that he needs. All right, let's see if he coins. Another Mono Worm comes out. That That is pretty good. We can see the same combination come out here. Uh, let's see, Mono Worm, he's thinking about it. I wonder if he's just also thinking about that as your Drake as well, because he can t he can get it. Yes, yeah, he absolutely can. Um, I mean, it is tempting to be able to get the Mana Worm out there, though, when you can coin, just because it's essentially a free plus one damage. He yeah. even has a potential here to put the Mana Worm out there, coin, and do a couple of spells and sit it at four damage to ensure that it stays alive, and he'll be sitting behind those uh, two zero two taunts with Mirror Image. That's not a terrible play, but it does waste a lot of cards out of his deck all at once. Yes, and ultimately, that's exactly what happens. It's also vulnerable to Holy Nova, so I like the Azure Drake play more. I really do. Yes. So out it comes, he gets a card, and he gets a 4-4 on the field, so that's pretty nice. Artosis has got to start pulling into things. Uh, maybe not that, mm. though. Yeah, this is not great. I mean, if he only knows he only takes out one creature, he does heal himself back up for two, mm. uh, but he's still going to take a big hit from that uh, Azura Drake. And all the while, Crypt just keeps sitting and gathering cards, gathering cards, gathering cards. Uh, I think maybe he has to Holy Nova. He's got to buy himself a little bit of time here. It's either that or he just heals himself and takes the damage because he really doesn't want to use Holy Nova like that. But I think, yeah, the Holy Nova is going to happen. So he does that and heals himself back up a little bit, gets that out of the way, and now, of course, goes to Crypt's Hand of Dark. Kind Dwarf comes out, very nice. Not Water bad. Elemental, Mana Worm available there as well for combinations. Admittedly, you would love to be able to actually start using some Frost Bolts, but there's no creatures on the board for that to happen. So out comes the Mana Worm. Let's see what the follow-up is. A Water Elemental, nice and safe play. I like the fact that he's holding on to his spells and he can use them next turn and then attack because if you otherwise going to make that target. Alchemy Soul Priest. This is really interesting. We obviously don't see this all that often. So this would actually turn his hero power heal into a two damage spell, which and is quite cool. That's not bad because you could throw that out and he could kill the Azure Drake. I mean, his other possibilities are going for the, high, uh, the Holy Fire, but there's yeah. no good targets. If he no. takes out the Azure Drake, it's only at two health. If he takes out the Mana Worm, there's still seven damage on board. 
and he can't kill the water elemental with it. No, so he's, he's kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, yeah. I think Alchemy Soul Priest into the damage is probably the best call he currently has. He may not want to put it out there because protecting it could be very difficult, but regardless, it may be the best option he's got right now. All right. Well, he's considering, and he is actually just going to go for the Holy Fire. Yeah, I mean, that's going to gain him five health. It, it takes a big threat off the board. Uh, but, of course, he didn't want to have to use it right there. Well, I mean, you could, you could look, see the resignation in his face. Like, yeah, oh, I wanted to use Holy Fire on something better. But ultimately, you don't get the best-case scenario all the time. You've got to play to your strengths. Okay, a Sorcerer's Apprentice. Man, that, that's going to be absolutely fantastic. That can mean a turn seven Pyroblast if he wants to play that. We'll see if he wants to do that. He wants to protect himself in Dead. Okay. Oh, and that was really smart. Did you see what he just did? He ensured yeah. that that uh, Drake stood at four uh, health, one, or I'm sorry, four attack once again, so it he can't be removed. It, exactly. He didn't push it higher than that to make sure that the priests didn't have the ability to do the Shadow Word Death. I mean, it's an advanced play right here from Crip, and he's in a fantastic spot this game. And once again, I mean, there's there's single target removal here uh, in Holy Fire for Artosis, but he doesn't have a lot of follow-up options. I mean, obviously, he's not going to commit anything big to the board right now. Uh, Jenny Soul Priest doesn't do as much. The uh, silence is word. nice, though. Yeah, I mean, that's really, that's really the best option I think he had right there. And then play the Injured Blade Master just for the sake of it. Neutralize a lot of damage and also potential damage from spells coming in next turn. So that's totally fine. Blizzard comes out, so a little bit of healing possibility. He doesn't have any spell power on the board anymore. Otherwise, that would have actually killed everything that his opponent had, so it's so unfortunate he wasn't able to keep his Drake around, but the Sorcerer's Apprentice is a possibility to I, there's, there's a lot yeah. he can do here. He's I mean, got he's got everything he needs. Yeah, honestly, he could just Blizzard, ping one of those minions away, yeah. and then swing in for eight. That's a totally acceptable play, especially because he's getting up in the Pyroblast range now. Sorcerer's Apprentice is going to allow him to play Blizzard and Frostbolt at once, if he would so desire. Yep. And it looks like that's what's going to happen. All right, well, he's going to actually use Frostbolt on his opponent. We know that this deck actually does involve some degree of nuke down, but all right, this is powerful. The thing is, the Pyroblast's right there. This is that turn eight kill that his deck was actually talking about here. Admittedly, Holy Fire may end up ruining that, but there's so many minions on the board, it's just probably going to kill him right outright there. Yeah, this this is ugly. I don't actually see a way out of this. No, neither do I. Uh, looks like he uses Power Word Shield, gives him a little health back on that minion, and he draws just another Injured Blade Master. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's not going to cut it. No, no, it absolutely is not. The, the Pyroblast is sitting there, and I think that Artos knows, considering he just he just ate a Frostbolt. It's like, oh, right, you're throwing those at me? Okay, that, you want to kill me on turn eight. And this Holy Fire, and that, that still doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, It's not going to matter. There's too much damage on the board, plus that Pyroblast. Yep. He Promise turn eight. He delivers turn eight. Crip is going to take this to the ace match. That's right. We are all tied up in our first match to go to that ace match happens in the finals. Congratulations to Kriparian. We're going to our last game. We absolutely are. And it will be Warrior versus Mage. This is going to be an entertaining one. There's yes. no question about that. Rushdown versus Rushdown coming in here. Two different forms of it. Minion-based Rushdown, spell-based Rushdown. And neither of them have really made a deck that is just all or nothing. Right. So we may very well actually see a long drawn out game, even though it sounds like it's going to be short. Yeah, they both want to do a lot of damage to their opponent, but they still have the capability to protect themselves and trade efficiently if they need to. That's absolutely right. We're going to see that Warrior deck here in just a second. If you guys tuned in to the first semifinal, of course, you did get a chance to see it against Trump. Uh, it is a deck that's largely based on charge. It's largely based on weapons. It's largely based on uh, very cool things like doing damage to your own minions to make sure that you can have the maximum possible attack. We yep. saw a 7-2 on turn 2 last that we time. Did. Yes, the 7-2 on turn 2 play with the Cruel Taskmaster, which is just a wonderful play. And, of course, we saw the mighty Gromash Hellstream come out for the 11 damage finisher with charge with the Inner Rage combo. An absolutely phenomenal play. And it, I mean, it wiped Trump off the map so incredibly fast. Yeah. But that is a combo that relies on certain cards to come into your hand by a certain time, which is not guaranteed. John? Yes? Are you ready? I'm absolutely ready. Ladies Blizzcon, and gentlemen, are you ready for the final game of the Innkeeper's Invitational? Then let's get started right now. This is it. It's all down to this one match. 
going to be Warrior versus Mage in the Grand Finals. It's gone 2-2. It's been the best possible series we could have asked for. Absolutely. Absolutely evenly matched between these two. We've seen the best that their deck building skills have. Now we get to see the last deck of both players. It's all on the line. It is sudden death right now. And let's see what comes out. And look at that. Cruel Taskmaster, Frothing Berserker, Fiery Warrix, Gorhel opening. Of course, that Gorhel's going to go away yeah, here. Yeah, uh, go that. He definitely doesn't want to keep that. Fiery War Axe is certainly nice. Sorcerer's Apprentice, Water Elemental, Cone of Cold for Kriparian. He immediately gets rid of uh, the latter two, I would imagine. Or is he going to keep that one? Oh, Water Elemental is not a bad idea to keep on in this deck, simply due to the fact that this is really creature aggro, and he can freeze those over and over again, making sure that he retains a, a decent amount of health on the Water Elemental. Yeah, it's good because you can lock down enraged creatures before they get enraged. Obviously, that will enrage them, but it also freezes them so they can't end up actually using that enrage. That's right. I like keeping a hold of the Fiery War Axe. Obviously, you'd keep a hold of that. Sorcerer's Apprentice is pretty good from this stage, so he might want to keep a hold of that as well. I would love to mention something as well. Uh, compared to the rest of the mage decks that we've seen, Kriparian has two acidic swamp oozes. And of course, that is yeah. a 3-2 for two that destroys your opponent's weapon. And this is a very weapon-heavy deck it's for Artosis. It definitely does have a lot of them. We saw the Gore Howl there. We've seen the Fiery War Axe. I believe there was at least one Arcanite Reaper in that deck as well. And it looks like Fiery War Axe is going to come out right away. Yep, and immediately we, we smash said aggro, we're not kidding. He's going for it. All right. It has been now been thrown down. He immediately opens up with the swing. And this would be disastrous if we see... Okay, no Acidic Swamp Boost. Yeah. So Artosis is actually in a magnificent position right now. Not the, anymore. He isn't. The Taunt just came out. So that's going to soak that out. Yes, but he is going to have a Bloodsail Raider who comes out as a 5-3 yes. on turn 2, which is very, very important for him. Yep. Arcanite Reaper right there. There is the Blood Sail Raider. It, of course, is going to end up running into a Taunt next turn unless he has another way of getting rid of that, which uh, he actually doesn't on next turn. I don't believe Pyroblast, that's not going to really help him too much right now. He can play a second Sorcerer's Apprentice yeah. for maybe the one and only turn six Pyroblast we've ever seen in Hearthstone, but uh, I mean, it's a creature. At, at the end of the day, it's a creature. You might as well play it. He's yeah. going to trade that to kill that out immediately to make sure it doesn't get the swing, which is absolutely fine. It's probably the best thing he could have done from there. Raging Worgen in a rage. Ho, ho, ho. Now that starts to get really, really nice. But I'd play the Frothing Berserker first, perhaps. Absolutely. Because otherwise, uh, this uh, this Frothing Berserker can actually take the damage yeah. from that minion. Yeah, I mean, we could see a ping gonna, combo. Yeah, and it it's going to force the ping, yeah. But. Right. But uh, making sure that that Worgen comes out next time ensures that it doesn't just trade to the less cost uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice that's sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's the damage of the ping. So, you know, at least you're, force, you're forcing him to do a little bit there. And that, as they say, is that. So holding on to the Raging Worgen was the right call. A Rathi Weaponsmith is now available, so he can draw yet another weapon. A Cruel Taskmaster available for the Raging Worgen is definitely a possibility too. But right now, he wants to he wants to basically create a board where that Raging Worgen will be able to live so it can actually right. hit something. One thing that he's done a very nice job, uh, Artosis has done a very nice job though, is that he's forcing a lot of cards out of Crip right now. I mean, Crip has some options. He's certainly uh, it's not like, you know, he's doing poorly in this game necessarily, but he wants to be able to have options available to him. He's forced to actually use a blizzard right now to stop that 3-3 uh, three, three from coming through and wiping out his board, yeah. uh, but obviously not the most efficient use of blizzard, especially against this deck. Yeah, it also does... Oh, another Raging one coming out here as well. It obviously doesn't freeze the hero as well. It's only the minions. One point, Crip, forcing this deck to use a lot of cards is a great idea. You want to know why? Crip, I believe, has no card draw of any description outside of his single Azure Drake in his deck. I think you are correct. I'm going through his deck list right now. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So this could be very, very problematic. Nice ping there, a good efficient yeah. trade. He takes out uh, the Arathi Weaponsmith, uh, and that weapon was actually only used once, so that was pretty efficient for Grip, honestly. Yep, all right, well, the uh, we've got, oh, another Fiery War Axe, nice. So he's got the Arcanite Reaper as a potential swing right here. However, that, that creature right there, the Water Elemental, is going to be a problem. Yeah. It's going to lock down his opponent. Eh? Because that's that's as we've seen, he can, he can kill it off this turn, and he might actually have to. But if that is allowed to actually hit the warrior, it's going to freeze it. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, there's not a lot of great options here because nothing just trades efficiently for Artosis at the moment. If he loads the board up with Raging Organs or something like that, well, they're going to get dispatched up very quickly yeah. by those two creatures. Um, and it looks like he is just going to use Inner Rage, right, take out yeah, the Water I Elemental. Think that's the best, there we go. the best option he had. Uh, and then he can play the Raging Organ after that. He's got a better shot of actually being able to do something with it. Plays the Fire 
it works because, hey, you should actually use your mana. Right. That uh, tends to help. But let's see what Crip is able to pull off the top of the deck. Arcane Missiles. Potentially, he can kill off. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's almost certainly going to kill off that Raging Wargun unless he gets extremely unlucky because he can then trade his... He can trade his Mana Worm for it. All right, so he does one damage there, and Conan Cold's not quite enough. This is actually annoying because he has the full trade. He I wanted know. to get two hits in there so we could just ping it away. Yeah. I was I was wondering. I think I was thinking about the idea of him actually trying to control that Raging Worgen for a little while. Maybe throw down the Cone of Cold. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, that gets you then a four damage with the Mana Worm there. But we mentioned the lack of card draw. Yes, uh, Artos is only at 21 health right now, and it looks like he is going to yeah, Cone of Cold. It, that. That it that goes through. Sense, yeah. He's sitting Rather on very few on cards. The board. Yeah. yeah, they're both playing low card right now, I've got to say. There's not a lot of card draw in the Warrior deck either. There's no Battle Rages. Warsong, oh. oh no! Oh, does he have enough mana to play everything? He could Three, doesn't six, eight. quite. No! Yeah. Oh, oh boy. It's still good, don't get me wrong, but yeah, that's that's a nasty thing to have. And I was thinking maybe he plays the Warsong Commander and then hopes that it doesn't get eliminated, but he's playing very cautiously right now. Oh! I think a lot of Acidic Swamp Boost comes out. Right, well, that's not the worst thing to lose to, but there's a Pyroblast right there. Hey, Crip is in a good spot, I've got to say, coming into this, but the charge play is available. Okay. He waited for this turn to make this happen. Okay. This is going to be brutal. So let's add up the damage here because we're going to have the Warsong Commander, then we're going to have the Raging Organ, which of course is going to get hit here uh, cruel by taskmaster the Cruel right? Taskmaster. Yeah. yeah, the Cruel Taskmaster comes and does one damage to the Raging Worgen. Right. Gives it plus two attacks, that's and now it's going to be at 10. six. That's going to hit for 10. Then that, uh, sorry, 12. And then that's 14. And it is not quite enough to kill him off this turn, as you might imagine, but it does put him in a really good spot. Suddenly the combo comes right out from Artosis. It takes his opponent down to five. Wow, this is incredibly close right now. And what a way to finish up this tournament, I have to say. Uh, we have... He can't kill him. Yeah, we have a he Shattered Sun Cleric, and that's not enough. No, it isn't. Wait, wait, no. Yeah, no, no, it is. It 14 damage. He can do it. So if... Or no, no, he can't play both. Oh, God. Yeah, he's, he can't do if, it. If only you had no. 11 mana, this would actually work. But it can't. The no. Shattered Sun Cleric could buff that up and then go for critical damage with the Pyroblast. It's not going to be enough. He can't get everything else off the board. He's Crit Okay, he knows he's one damage short right now, so he's got to find cost-efficient ways to be able to take out this board. So if he takes out, uh, what can he do right now? He can trade the Water Elemental against a couple of things. He's got to get rid of the Raging Worgen, though, and he just doesn't have that possibility. He almost, in a way, needs to use Pyroblast on the board. Yeah, which which would just be horrible. I yeah. Mean, right, so if he trades the Water Elemental there for the Worgen, that leaves four damage potential on the board, but of course, it's a, it's the Warsong Commander. If that card in his hand, which we know, of course, is a creature, is played, that's GG. He is done. He doesn't know for certain, but he can't leave the Raging Worgen there because he dies to that. It's the biggest damage output that's currently on this board. So he could potentially use the Water em Elemental and take out... Uh, he used Pyroblast on the Raging Worgen, Oregon, perhaps. Then he uses the Water Elemental to just take out probably Warsong Commander or something like that. That leaves two damage available on the board and puts yeah, him in a precarious he, position, but it's he about still, as good he as still he dies gets. because this is the last card to Cruel Taskmaster. That's right. We know it's a Cruel oh, Taskmaster. He doesn't. No. Pyroblast is being used on the Raging Wargon right there. He's going to take out that Charging Creature, and that was the best possible thing he could have done. However, oh, no. however, the one card that remains in that hand is the uh, Cruel Taskmaster. It's not enough to kill him. It'll take him down to, to one. one. But there's a Leper Gnome! And the Leper Gnome, yeah, it's going to hit the board right here. Uh, let's see here. If he does two, four damage, including if he p would ping the Leper Gnome for whatever reason. Uh, then so he dies. In either case, <laughs> yeah, he can't do it, so... Wow, okay, it, incredibly tense. It's ridiculously precarious. It's probably going to come down to the next. Of course, he's able to armor up right there. He could play another Cruel Taskmaster, buff up that current one. That would take it up to four. That will take him down to one health. Or if he wants to play the game out a little bit longer, he could use that to take out the Water Elemental. And, okay. Oh, this, is, this is really close right wow. now. If, if Crit pulls it back from this, it will actually be amazing. But he's going to take it down to one. Oh. All right, Lepino's now on the field. I see... You would have to silence the Lebanon. No, I don't think there's a way. Yes. Oh, he can't use Blizzard. He, he can't, can't do use it. Blizzard. He can't do it. It will kill him. Yeah, but Blizzard will actually kill himself right now. He, he, he has no other choice. Than, I mean, there's nothing else he can do. He's dead. He, I mean, he is dead. There's oh, no way no. out of this. Oh, no. He's going to do He commits suicide. <laughs> Artosis <laughs> is your champion. <laughs> Artosis is your champion here for the Hearthstone Innkeepers Invitational at BlizzCon.
in a nail-biting final game. <laughs> Look at that. Great representation there as they run over and cheer for him. Artosis, you have won a tournament at BlizzCon. Congratulations. Perhaps not 10 years ago, the game he thought he would be winning a tournament in, but regardless, he pulls it off. And incredible deck building, great decision making across the board from him. Crip played a phenomenal final game, and that came all the way down to the wire. But as you said, it was unlikely that he was going to get out of that at that point. Oh man, what a way to end that. Thank you very much to everyone who has tuned into this tournament. This has just been a pleasure to broadcast, to be totally honest. Absolutely phenomenal games as well, and I am now incredibly psyched up more than I ever thought possible for the future of Hearthstone Live events. Yeah, th this was a lot of fun, and I think things are only going to end up getting better for this game once we get the ability to show you stats, get the spectator mode in play, and of course, see more cars added. There it is. The bracket, perhaps, many people did not think would happen. Perhaps an unlikely victor, but regardless, Artosis put the work in, and Artosis is your champion. There we have it. Artosis stands alone. He went a combined, let's see here, 9 and 3 over the course of the tournament, so a very, good record. very really good impressive record. play. Yeah, absolutely, guys. It's been a pleasure broadcasting this for you, though. Uh, I'm Kevin Aki, joined alongside by Total Biscuit. You can follow us on Twitter right there, but please be hashtagging about BlizzCon this entire event. We still have lots of incredible Awesome action coming throughout the course of the day. That we absolutely do. And we will hopefully have a chance to have a few words from Artosis momentarily. And he will be presented with his trophy. And hopefully it's not too big, otherwise that's not going back to Korea with him. All right, guys. Well, it looks like uh, we're going to be moving here into the award ceremony in just a second. So let's go ahead and turn it over to our host, Zoe. Thank you so much, guys. What an incredible game. That was a final just worth a final. That was exactly how I wanted it to go, and it's how it went. And for the award ceremony, we're going to get a very special guest here on stage. So please, a big round of applause for a Blizzard representative. We're going to get Christina Sims, the Hearthstone Community Manager. Hello. Hi. Lovely to have you here. I think, I mean, I saw you right over there. You enjoyed those finals. Anything you want to say to the people here? This turnout is absolutely insane. Thank you guys so much for supporting Hearthstone while we're still in beta. And if this is any outlook on what we have to the future, I am greatly looking forward to it. All right, so does everyone in here. So thanks so much for joining us here. And I see you have a trophy, and I guess we need someone who will receive that one. So please, everyone, give it up for the first winner of the Innkeepers Invitational Hearthstone for the first time here on stage at the BlizzCon 2013, Artosis! Woo! So Artosis, before I'm gonna let you get your hands on that lovely trophy, anything you wanna say out there? I mean, you can start the bragging right now here on stage, so feel free to go for it. Uh, yeah, I wanna thank the people who really helped me practice a lot, and that's LS, Doa, Strife Crow, uh, Marson, Max, and Ecop. Without them, I absolutely would not have been ready for this tournament. Well, thank you so much at those guys. It's been incredible what you play. So once more, congratulations. And now, please receive our lovely trophy, our champion of the Hearthstone tournament here at the BlizzCon 2013. Thanks. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. And thank you, Artosis, for being Grandmaster of the Hearth! Woo! So well deserved. That was absolutely amazing. The whole semifinals and finals. So thanks everyone who watched. Thanks everyone to tune in. But now, don't go anywhere. We still have a lot of matches coming up here on stage. We're going to go into the semifinals of the World of Warcraft Arena Global Finals. That's going to happen at any minute. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 